Well, I'm glad to be here, and my name is Michael Lederer, and I'm here in Dallas, Texas. I'm originally from New York, born and raised. I grew up in a conservative Jewish household, and it was pretty secular. I grew up, as I was saying, in a secular Jewish home with a lot of love, and my parents were wonderful. My dad was a professional athlete. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. There was no lack of love in our house. They were, there were really no parameters, you know. In other words, we didn't really have boundaries. As a result of that, they were very liberal-minded. As a result of that, uh, when I went off to college, which was in Miami, Florida, I, was, I, got, I went through a very wild period. So I grew up as a really good student, a really good kid, but when I went off to college, as I think a lot of kids, you know, when you sow your oats, uh, I got involved with a lot of really bad people. Actually, it was not during college, it was really after college. I got into the world of drugs and the, all the craziness that goes along with that. Very, very out of control. I was a business guy, so I always looked very good. From the outside, people saw me. I looked very good and very, you know, like that. When you look at somebody and go, oh, that guy really has it together. But on the inside, I was deteriorating. I was literally falling apart from the inside out. I spent most of my life uh, just kind of on a spiritual search, was never really filled in, uh, in the traditional synagogue. You know, many, many, many Jews, uh, even if they go to synagogue, they are not really very religious to speak. The religious Jew, Jews are typically your Orthodox Jews. We're more traditional Jews. My wife, I should say, my wife is also Jewish. She was a closed closet believer. In other words, she was a Jewish believer, but she didn't let anybody know because she was afraid that she would be alienated from the community. So when I met my wife, uh, and I told her at that point I was into new age religion, which means that I was, I believe there was, there were many ways to get to heaven. That was uh, a, a, a new age facility with a lot, with the monks there and Mahat Gandhi and some of the people that were involved in it back in the days was Paramahansa Yogananda, some of the people from the West that came over, beautiful people, but they, they are not the way to Jesus. So I used to, I used to attend this, uh, their services. Inside the services, they have pictures of, so I'd be in this little um, a monastery, and they have pictures of all the many, all the masters. So you'd have Paramahansa Yogananda, you'd have Gandhi. In that a series of pictures, there was a picture of Jesus. Now Jesus, they considered Jesus one of the masters. As a matter of fact, one of the higher masters, but they didn't consider him as the only way to, uh, to, to get to the Father. My wife didn't believe that at all, and she started bringing me to a Bible church. I, for the first time, even though I was raised Jewish and I knew all, knew all the Jewish prayers and I knew how to read Hebrew, understood, I understood everything about who I was, for the first time I uh, began to read the Bible. Started out, you obviously started from beginning to end in Genesis all the way through. During that period of time and going to a Bible church, the combination of the two, uh, God started to work in my heart. God started to work in my life, and then I had a very, very dramatic, for most Jews, same thing in the Muslim world, you need to have a, generally need to have a traumatic transformation because we're going against the grain. Most, I'm sure in Korea as well, you're going against the grain of all the tradition, you know, how you grew up. So you're going against all your family, your friends and everyone, and you have to be ready to, and accept the fact that you're gonna be most probably alienated once you come out and tell people about your faith. Therefore, it's very, very difficult. God knew that about me, and I'm a pretty stubborn kind of a guy. I had a, a, an encounter with Jesus. I actually had a, a vision Jesus actually came to me while I was in, in the Word and, and beginning to develop a faith, a head faith, not a heart faith, but a head faith, Satan started to attack me in, in dreams. And they were very, very, uh, they were really terrifying dreams. And I felt as though I was being uh, followed and, and uh, by many, many people trying to get me. There, there was a series, this went on for about three, four months, a series of of uh, nightmarish type dreams. And I finally had one dream that was uh, terrible where I actually 
Satan actually came to me in this, vision, in this dream as in a vision. I was terrified. I was jumped out of bed. I ran into the corner. I was in the fetal position. And I realized something really dramatic was happening to me, and it wasn't good. I was having another reoccurring dream. I remember running through this cylinder, but this time at the end of the cylinder, it was, there was Jesus. At that point, I had never read Revelation. I knew nothing about the description of Jesus that's given in Revelation. What I saw was when, it, when the scripture says that you will know, be careful for false prophets, because you will know when it's Yeshua, when you know it's Jesus. And when I looked up, what all I saw, all I saw was Jesus, there was nothing else. And that's what I believe was going to, that's the way it's going to be one day is you'll know because he will fill the skies, he'll fill everything. His eyes were beaming through me, no words spoken, but his eyes were beaming and there was these brilliant emerald and, and uh, diamond type colors coming through. And his eyes beamed through me and the only thing that I felt in my spirit was you no longer have anything to fear. You know, I'm with you. Well, from that point on, being a, a stubborn Jew, at that point on, that was it. I not only gave my uh, life to J Jesus as a believer, but I gave, you know, I was willing at that point to do anything for him. Uh, that was in 1986. I immediately got involved in ministry. I'm a music guy, so I, I got involved in children's music. So I wound up for nine years ahead of children's music at a Bible church. Then I went from on to that into going into leading worship in not even Messianic congregations, but at that point in churches all over the country actually. So I've been a worship leader for many, many years. A friend of mine had asked me to help out probably around eight, nine years ago in a Messianic congregation in Dallas. When I started helping my friend out, going back to this Messianic congregation and falling back in love with my Jewish roots and the Jewish music that I grew up with, uh, that was the beginning of getting involved in Messianic uh, worship ministry. I'm a songwriter, so I write a lot of my, the, a lot of music I do is original music, even in the congregation today. I've been involved in many different congregations right now where um, I'm a worship pastor. Everything I do in the course of a day, I'm always realizing, I'm not, I never feel like I'm doing it alone. I'm always feeling like the Lord is with me. You know, I have a partner out there with me. Re relationship with the Lord is a 24-7 relationship. It's not a, uh, a Sunday thing. I mean, this is, this is our today, tomorrow, and our forever.